ninth graders, welcome to chapter 3, lesson 2. We're going to be talking about zeros of linear functions. So we're going to be finding zeros of things that make lines. So our objective is to find zeros of linear functions, because that's what the title is. Our standards are algebra, reasoning, expressions, and inequalities, standard number 10, and functions, interpreting functions, standard 7a. Let's go ahead, look at some vocab real quick, and start this lesson. Most of you got this in class, but that's okay. We're just going to bring it back with this video. All right, so with this idea of linear function, before we do that, we actually want to look at a linear function definition. A linear function is a graph that is a function, so it's a graph that is a function, and it makes a straight line because the word linear means line. So we want a graph that makes a straight line, but it does two things, because we remember in hopefully chapter one, when we talked about functions, a function does two things. The first thing it does is it passes a vertical line test. When graphed, you're only allowed to draw a line that's straight up and down and hit one point on the graph with that vertical line. If you hit two points, not a function. Now, if it's not graphed, what you could do is you could look at a table of values, and in order to be a function, every x value has to be paired with one y value. So if your graph satisfies the vertical line test, and every x is only paired with one y value, then it's a function. So a linear function is what we're going to be looking at doing today. We're going to find the zeros of linear functions. So we're going to do a couple quick vocab words, and then we're going to go ahead and start. So two quick vocab words, we have zeros and we have root. A zero is an x-intercept of a graph. A root is actually the exact same thing, but a root's definition is really any time the graph crosses the x-axis, the point at which the graph hits the x-axis is the root. So any time you have an x-intercept, you also have a root. So today we're going to be um, graphing linear equations and finding zeros. So we're going to figure out when does it hit the x-axis and when does it not. That's what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So in order to do this lesson, we have to remember one big equation from when we were in 8th grade, maybe 7th grade. It depends on when we saw this, and if you haven't seen that, that's okay. So we have this equation that we might remember. We have two ways of solving problems. And the first one is by using something called slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form is the equation y equals mx plus b. Now, I want you guys to write that equation down. Now, m is really considered to be our rise over run. And our b is the point that your graph starts. So you have to start at whatever b is. You also want to know that the b is really the y-intercept. So this is the point that your graph hits the y-line. So we have this idea of slope-intercept form. Hopefully you guys have seen that um, in Algebra 1 by now, or at least in a previous grade level. But if you haven't, I'm going to teach you guys how to use slope-intercept form in today's lesson. So we're going to be doing slope-intercept form. Now to do this, the first things we're going to do is in our lesson, we're going to take an equation that says something with f of x. The first thing you want to do is you want to change f of x, you want to change it to the letter y. So anytime we see f of x, we're going to change it to y. This is step one. The second step is if we have to, we want to get the letter y by itself. Which means that we really want to get our equation in y equals mx plus b. Now, once our equation is in y equals mx plus b, we want to graph it. So go ahead and graph it. Now, if we want to figure out the zero, this is where we're actually going to do step four. And we're going to replace y with zero in the equation. So we're going to take f of x out. We're going to graph y equals mx plus b, and then we're going to replace y with 0. And when we replace y with 0, we're only going to have one variable left, and that's x. So we replace y with 0, and then the last thing we're going to do is we need to solve for x, and that equals our x-intercept. So we have five things that we're going to be doing. 
part one. We're going to change f of x to the variable y. That's going to make it look like this, because we're going to get y equals mx plus b. And hopefully we got y all by itself. Once we have y equals mx plus b, we're going to graph by using the rise and the run. But before we use the rise and the run, we have to start by putting a dot or a point at the y-intercept. We have to put our first point at the y-intercept. Once we have the y-intercept, we're going to use the rise to figure out how much to go up or down, then how much to go right or left. And then we put another dot. So the y-intercept creates one point, and the rise and run creates another point. Once you have two or three points, you connect your two points, and that makes your line. Linear functions. We're going to graph it. After we graph it, we're actually going to solve our equation by finding out the zero. Now, sometimes it's easy to see the zero, and you don't actually have to solve for zero. But sometimes we actually have to solve for zero, and that's where we're going to replace y with zero. And then we're going to solve for the x and get the x-intercept, which is our zero or our root. That's what we're going to do in today's lesson. So the first part of today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to do slope-intercept form. Second part, I'm going to teach you how to do a table and graph. And then we're done for the day. Two quick examples. All right. In example one, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the zeros of each linear function by graphing. So here we have our equation, f of x equals 3x minus 3. The function of x, so it's telling us it's a function, which means it has to pass the vertical line test, and every x has to be paired with 1y. We're going to find it by graphing. So we're going to graph this because this right here, we're going to change into y equals mx plus b. So the first thing I told you to do is I told you that we should replace, we should change f of x to y. So we have y equals 3x minus 3. Now looking at this, this is actually written in y equals mx plus b. We are going to start at whatever number is in the b spot, which is negative 3. We're going to put a point on the y line because the b is our y-intercept. So we're going to put a point at negative 3 on the y line. Here's the y line. Here's 0 on the y line, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We're going to put a point where negative 3 would be. That's where my graph is going to start. Now, the m, which is our slope, tells us our rise over our run. So we kind of have to look at it as a fraction. So we started here. Now we're going to make this a fraction. Well, the 3 tells me how much I rise. So I'm going to rise three spaces up from the point that we just made. We're going to rise up three, one, two, three. And since we put it over one, and the reason why we put it over one is any number divided by one itself. So we go up three, we go over one, put a dot. We go up three again, one, two, three. We go over one, put a dot. We go ahead and connect our dots, and we have graphed our linear equation. So this is what our graph should look like, something around this. Now, it says find the zeros by graphing. So with zeros, you're really finding just the x-intercept, but I want you also to find the y-intercept. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this, and we're going to say the y-intercept, well, it hits the y-line right here. So the y-intercept is at negative 3, and the x-intercept, which is actually our zero, our zero, or our x-intercept, and so they the x-line right at 1, we can go ahead and put 1. Since we know the exact point that x is hitting the line, we don't have to change y to 0. So we don't have to do step 4 and 5. We only do step 1, 2, and 3. So this is our answer to this problem here. Now, if we didn't know that this graph was hitting at 1, this is where we could do the last part. We would actually use our equation here. We would change y to 0, so we'd have 0 equals 3x minus 3. So this is what we'd actually be solving to figure out where the graph hits the x line if we didn't know. We would add 3, add 3. So this means that the y really changes to 0 in this problem. 0 plus 3, that's 3. So we have... 3 equals 3x's, this cancels out, 
And to solve for x, we would divide by 3, divide by 3, that would cancel out, and we would get x equals 1. And we can see right here that the graph is crossing at 1. So if your gra graph doesn't cross at a whole number or um, an integer, then you want to actually use the zero method. That's where you replace y with zero, and then you solve for x, which is step four and step five. We're going to go ahead and look at the table method to do another one and graph and then find the zeros. So let's, this is how you do it if you know slope-intercept form, but if you don't know slope-intercept form, that's okay. We're going to do the table method um, for our last example, and then you guys are done. It says we have the function f of x equals, or the function of x equals 4 times x minus 1. We're going to graph and find the zeros by using a table. So we looked at how to use slope-intercept form to graph it, which is probably one of the easier methods. But now we're going to do the table method. Now, this is actually called a function table. So this is a function table because on the left side we have the x. That's the number that we're going to plug in. In the middle, we actually have what we're computing. On the right side, we have the y, and on the far right, we have our coordinate pair, and that's when we take our x value with our y answer, and we pair them together, so that way we get our points that we're going to actually be graphing. So what we want to do is we want to start with small numbers. So in mathematics, there's usually five numbers that are good numbers to plug in. We have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And that's because it's usually pretty simple to multiply by 2, multiply by 1, multiply by 0, multiply by 2. So those are numbers that are good to use. You want to look at negatives as well as positives most times when graphing. So I'm going to show you how to use a function table with these five numbers. Now, we might not actually put all five numbers on here because we might not have room, but if we can fit all the five numbers on there, that'd be good too. So the way you do this is you start with f of negative 2, so this is telling me that I'm going to put negative in 2 in for x. f of negative 2 equals 4 times negative 2 minus 1. So what I want to do is I actually want to figure out what 4 times negative 2 is. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So in this case, we have f of negative 2 equals negative 8 minus 1. So what we want to do is we want to say, well, a negative 8, take away one more is negative 9. So one of my coordinate pairs would be negative 2, negative 9. Well, looking at this, I could go back to, but I can't go down 9, so I'm going to say that I probably can't graph that point. So that's not a good point to graph, but we kind of got an idea of how we solved this. So now we're going to do the next one. We have f of negative 1, so the function of negative 1, equals 4 times negative 1 minus 1. And again, we're just replacing the x with negative 1. So 4 times negative 1, we have the function of negative 1 equals 4 times negative 1, that's negative 4. And negative 4 minus 1 is going to be my answer. Well, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So when I plug in negative 1, I get negative 5. So my coordinate pair, negative 1, negative 5. Now this is something that we could graph. So we start on the x line because x goes first. We go to negative 1. We go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Put a point. So this is our first coordinate pair because we're actually able to graph that pair. So we graphed our first point. Now we're going to do 0. So we're going to say if we have the function of 0, we get 4 times 0 minus 1. Now, some of you could probably do this math in your head, and if you can, that's okay. And if you can't, that's okay as well. Well, the function of 0 equals 4 times 0, that's 0. So we really have 0 minus 1. If we have nothing and we take 1 away, we're short by 1. So our coordinate pair for this one is 0, negative 1. So we go to 0 on the x, we go to negative 1 on the y, and we put a dot. So right now, we've got two points. We've almost got enough to make our line, but we want to keep going. Let's do 1. The function of 1 equals 4 times 1 minus 1. Okay, so the function of 1 equals 4 times 1, which is 4, and we're going to take away 1. 4 minus 1, that's 3. 
So if we plug 1 into our problem, we're going to get 3 out. 1 and 3 are coordinate pairs. So we go over 1, we go up 3, and we put a dot. We go ahead and connect our three dots. So this is our graph. Now, looking at this graph, I can tell you that we don't know exactly where it is crossing the X line. So that means we're going to have to solve the zero because it's not actually crossing at an integer. So since it's not crossing at an integer, this is where we're actually going to figure out what zero is. And we're going to figure out the exact point that this graph crossed that X line. But we're going to do one more piece here, and we're just going to make sure that 2 is on the graph. So we have the function of 2 equals 4 times 2, and we're taking away 1. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 1, 7. So I'm going to see if I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't have enough room to do 7. But if I went over 2 and up 7, I'd be right up here. So my graph is actually a little bit more like this. And... That would be my graph. So this is my line, but again, we want to find the zeros. So we made our table. We got 2, 7 as our very last point, and we have our graph. So we used the table to make a graph. That's our graph. Now we actually have to find the zero. The zero is the x-intercept. So we have to figure out where did the graph cross the x-line. Since we're trying to figure out where the graph crossed the x-line, this is where we're going to change f of x to y. Trying to look for room. You guys got the table? Hopefully you do. If you don't, rewind the video. You got that? I'm going to use this room here. So, now that we have our graph and we have our points from the table, We still need our graph to say where's the point at which the graph crosses the x line. So I'm going to do step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5, all in order. Step 1 says change f of x to y. So we have y equals 4x minus 1. Then it says graph it. Well, we have it graphed, so we're good on the graph. Okay. If you can, find the zeros, find the intercepts. Well, we could find the y-intercept, but we can't find the x-intercept, so let's go to step 4. We're going to change y to 0. So we have 0 equals 4x minus 1. Now, all we have to do is solve for x. So if we're going to get x by itself, we're going to add 1, add 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. So we have 1 equals 4x. We're going to divide by 4, divide by 4, and we get 1 fourth equals x. This right here is the zero, or it's also known as our x-intercept. So that means that this graph right here is crossing the x-line at one-fourth. This point right here represents one-fourth. It's not quite one, and it's not quite zero. It's one-fourth. It's actually a little bit closer to zero than it is to one. That's how we find the zeros by using a table. We use a table, we graph it, that's what we use the zero for if we don't know y equals mx plus b. And then after we have it graphed, we're going to go back to our equation. And if we cannot determine the zero, we plug in zero for y, and then we solve the equation for x. And that's where the graph would cross the x line. That's it for today's lesson. You guys did awesome. Hopefully this isn't too long for you. And I will see you in class tomorrow.